On January 28, 1986, the Challenger Space Shuttle was scheduled to launch into space, carrying seven crew members, including a civilian teacher, Krista McAuliffe. But just 73 seconds into its flight, the Challenger suddenly exploded, killing all aboard. The disaster stunned the world, and left many asking one question, why did it happen? To understand what went wrong, we need to look at the design of the Challenger shuttle itself. It consisted of three main parts, the orbiter, which contained the crew and the payload, the external tank, which held the fuel for the engines, and the two solid rocket boosters, which provided extra thrust during launch. The solid rocket boosters were particularly important to the Challenger's launch. They provided the extra thrust needed to lift the shuttle off the launch pad and into space. The seven crew members of the Challenger were a diverse group of individuals, including the first civilian to be selected for a space mission, Krista McAuliffe, who was a teacher chosen to participate in NASA's Teacher in Space program. The other crew members were Commander Francis Dick Scobby, Pilot Michael J. Smith, Mission Specialists Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, and Judith Resnick, and Payload Specialist Gregory Jarvis. However, the solid rocket boosters had a design flaw that would ultimately prove fatal. Each booster was made up of four sections, which were held together with O-ring seals. These seals were supposed to prevent hot gases from escaping from the boosters during flight. Prior to the launch of the Challenger, a group of engineers, including Bob Ebeling, warned NASA officials about the potential dangers of the O-ring seals. Ebeling and his colleagues argued that the O-rings could fail in cold weather, which was a concern on the day of the launch. Despite these warnings, NASA officials decided to proceed with the launch. And tragically, Ebeling's fears were realized when the O-ring seals failed and caused the explosion that killed the Challenger crew. Despite Ebeling's warning, NASA officials decided to proceed with the launch. Why did they make this decision, even after being warned about potential risks? Roger Boistjeli said they didn't want to postpone the launch because of the cost. The shuttle program was over budget, and they wanted to show the American public that they could still launch on time. The space shuttle program was incredibly expensive, and NASA was under a lot of pressure to prove that it was worth the cost. As a result, NASA officials were reluctant to delay the launch even when they were warned about potential risks. Tragically, this decision proved to be a fatal mistake. The O-ring seals failed during the launch, causing the Challenger to explode and killing all aboard. Bob Ebeling said it was the worst thing in my life, and I still feel that way. Ebeling and his colleagues were not alone in their concerns about the safety of the space shuttle program. Many engineers and scientists had raised concerns about the program's design and safety, but their concerns were often ignored. The Challenger disaster was a wake-up call for NASA and for the entire nation. President Reagan ordered an investigation into the disaster, and NASA implemented a number of changes to improve the safety of the space shuttle program. The Challenger disaster was a wake-up call for NASA and for the entire nation. President Reagan ordered an investigation into the disaster, and NASA implemented a number of changes to improve the safety of the space shuttle program. But tragically, another space shuttle, the Columbia, was lost in 2003, when it broke apart during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Once again, engineers had raised concerns about the safety of the shuttle program, but their warnings had been ignored. The Challenger disaster was a tragic reminder of the risks and dangers of space travel. But it also highlighted the importance of listening to the concerns of engineers and scientists, and of putting safety. In the aftermath of the disaster, Bob Ebeling and his fellow engineers were devastated by the loss of life. Ebeling in particular felt responsible for not being able to convince NASA officials to postpone the launch. He spent many years speaking publicly about the Challenger disaster and advocating for improved safety measures in the space program.